So today I am excited to bring you guys what might be one of the coolest videos I've ever uploaded to my channel. When I went out the track, I had the amazing opportunity to sit down and interview Jason Blundell. And I, before I upload this video, I just kind of put a little bit of a disclaimer because I feel like there's a lot of pressure when you interview Jason Blundell. I remember I was reading stuff on the Reddit when people realized we had time to sit down and interview Jason where they're like, oh, well, they better not waste this golden opportunity. We need to know about the portrait in Kino or the unsolvable, impossible Easter egg. And it's like, so here's the thing. This interview was very on the spot. I was playing Zombie Chronicles and a rep from Activision came up to me and said, hey, do you want to record an interview with Jason Blundell? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. And she's like, can you do it now? And I'm like, I guess so. Can you give me five minutes just to prepare some questions? And of course they did and I was able to scribble down some questions onto my phone for Jason Blundell and that's what this interview is. So I understand that there's a lot of questions you guys want answers to and I want answers to too. Things like the portrait or the unsolvable Easter egg or random ass story stuff and it's like unfortunately we won't get those answers from Jason even if you ask him straight up and I've heard in conversations people talking to him when I saw him at the Treyarch trip or I saw him at Call of Duty XP people would ask him sometimes these questions and he doesn't give a straight answer to. He doesn't want that. He either wants to reveal it later on his own time or let us figure it out on our own or let us continue to theorize about it. So I do ask him some hard-hitting story questions, I guess you could say, just to see what he would throw out there, almost like a little bit of bit of bait to see if he'd nibble for it. Unfortunately, he doesn't, and I kind of move on from that. I didn't want to get bogged down in story questions where the whole interview is like, could you tell me this? And he'd say, no. And I'd say, how about this? And he'd say, no. So understand that this was very impromptu on the spot. I hope I didn't waste my opportunity and I hope you enjoy the interview. <laughs> Jason, it's an honor to have you on the channel. Thank you. Thank you for coming. No worries. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm allergic to dust. Okay. And I overheard you say in JC's video that the basement is very dusty. Yes. I was hoping maybe you could take me down there just like make sure it's safe. Like, I'm a little worried being I, here that maybe some of the dust would float up. I'd well, here's just the like thing. Check so, it out. so it's, it's not really safe for anyone to go down there. Um, that's why, um, as, as Coach Studio head, I was escorted down with special clothing and so forth to, to do Did that. Did you have so white I, gloves on? I, I had to put white gloves on as well, so I'm, I am unfortunately can't take you down there. Oh. Um, sorry, I'll have to save that for another one. That's a shame. Yeah. I want to ask you that. So that poster, the Zombies Timeline. Yes. How did you go about making that? Um, so, where did you begin? Uh, where did we begin? <laughs> Um, so obviously we have a writing department here at, uh, mm -hmm. at Treyarch and uh, we have little kind of scraps of stuff that we've had over the years mm. um, but uh, basically the writing department sat down one kind of key individual kind of led the charge on this and just started to kind of pull everything together and bring it all together mm -hmm. um, and then it was the amount of kind of proofreading and checking and then checking all our facts and checking all the stuff and yeah. I, one of the great things about this is that the the maps that we've re-released now in, in Chronicles um, a lot of the guys who made the original maps mm -hmm. are the guys who remade Chronicles. So we could kind of talk to them, chat about stuff, work it out, and that's how we kind of synced it all together. And then uh, one of our artists then took that, combined it, and then we started tracking all the paths and the jumps. Mm -hmm. And not only was there all the information, yeah. but then all the connections and all the, all the kind of movement through the, uh, through the map. So that took, that took a couple of months to sort that out. I saw that. I saw, I saw you reveal the poster, mm -hmm. and I just got so excited, especially <laughs> when JC read it. And I, I think it was um, Rick Toppin going to the basement of Ma with the Dead. I'm like, uh -huh. what? <laughs> and then uh, th there was a character. I started with the V. I don't know whose name it was. I forget. Mm -hmm. Victus. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell's Victus? Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to study the map for that. And part of, part of me is like, all right, well, now I'm out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also so excited to read this. I don't think, I don't think anyone's out of the job with this. I think, um, I think this will give you a lot more yeah. meat to hang theories on. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's... Um, there's definitely avenues that there's new questions in there, mm -hmm. um, some answers to some of the old ones, but I think it kind of creates a whole new set of questions to ask. So and I would say don't ov overlook the physical representation of the map as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious some of like the new stuff that's revealed on it. One of the questions I get a lot is mm -hmm. um, who's the Pentagon thief? And sure. I noticed that was revealed in um, one of the things. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering when you make that. Did yep. you already have that decided, or was this something you kind of, not made up, but sort of decided as you want it, almost like a revisionist history? Um, no, a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that the community's kind of been talking about and guessing about for years, we had answers for those things. There mm -hmm. was a couple of ones where there's certain connections on the timeline that we'd always said, well, that's, that's the reason why that hap that's happening, mm -hmm. but we never expressed it. 
Uh, and so some of them are, are new. But a lot of the kind of old stuff that the community has been talking about for years, uh, it forced us to actually make decisions on it. Because as we were moving forwards, yeah. we felt like we need to have concrete pillars. Even though we would not, let's say, restate it in the map, um, we agreed on that and said, this is what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's new ones as well to kind of tie it all, to connect, you know, connect it yeah. all together. So, the, so there were always kind of like these things that like internally yeah. you had the answer towards, but you just weren't ready or didn't have the right space to reveal it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's like because when you're, uh, as you're kind of adding new stories and adding new kind of components to it, mm -hmm. you start making kind of decisions about this is important, this is correct, yeah. this is the decision there. But the process of working through the zombie storyline was more about how do all these things connect and interrelate? Mm -hmm. And only when we started laying it down, you could actually see it. We're like, oh, excellent. It, it kind of makes sense. That's quite nice. So one of the things that's been driving me crazy mm. for months now, and I've, I've had multiple conversations with Reed about this, okay. the zombie eyes. Yes. It can you give me any kind of nudge in a direction or any kind of <laughs> hint as to what's going on there? Because it almost mm -hmm. seems like it doesn't follow a pattern. Sure. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's something. Um, I just haven't cracked. So it unfortunately, yet. I'm not going to give you that one in this video. Yeah. But I would say there is something. There's mm -hmm. also uh, there's also a time when it isn't something. Okay. So um, yes, that's it's interesting. Both, it's both sides of the equation. All right, the gears are turning, and yes. also the color of 115. Yes. Any any sort of nudge with that either? Nope. Damn. <laughs> you are <laughs> infuriating. Is the word you're looking for? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what was the first zombies map that you worked on? The first zombie map I worked on was uh, Doris for mm -hmm. uh, World at War. And that, um, that was interesting because, you know, uh, Nactador had been done, you know, it was all rolling, and, and I got brought in for, for DLC 3. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was terrified. I was absolutely, genuinely terrified. Um, because the community was already kind of forming, and there was already kind of a passion behind it, and I was just like, how do I not mess this up? Well, you knocked it out of the park. Thank you, thank you. I still, I still talk to people these days, and they'll, they'll say, oh, you do zombies? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I love Doris. All right, that's cool. I always hear that come up. Well, that was, that was, that was out of absolute fear. And, mm -hmm. um, and then, little known fact, or a fact that's kind of discussed a little bit is, we were starting to write stuff for, the, for the, a DLC 4 at the time as well, mm -hmm. so create stuff as well. Uh, and that's where you'll hear about like Paris and yeah. Post and uh, a cinema, and that got re-adopted in into Kino. Into Kino, and then the uh, the Coast map got turned into Call of the Dead, okay. and then the Paris map got turned into Moon. I've I've heard about that. I yeah. guess the so Moon in the early stages was Paris, and yeah. then it got reworked into being on the Moon. Well, it, it, they, how do you, how do you make that jump? So they they you know, and it was a fantastic team. You know, it was a different kind of group of guys, but a fantastic team took it, and then. Just certain of the little ideas got mm -hmm. moved, and I don't want to say it was it was just Paris because it wasn't. Paris is a very different map, but mm -hmm. Paris had the idea of a no man's land, and it had the Eiffel Tower, and then underneath that was a teleporter, and then there was the ah. catacombs of Paris underneath that, and uh, the idea was that you went into the kind of teleporter, and the and the Eiffel the Eiffel Tower was essentially a conduit for the power for it, mm -hmm. and then you got transported to this middle of oh, nowhere that's... where the pack a punch was, and it was just zombies all coming at you, and mm -hmm. there was no cover, and uh, it was brutal. Um, so, so would say the zombies all coming at you? Would mm -hmm. that maybe see be reworked into like the no man's land we had in Moon? Yeah. Oh. So that was that was that idea that kind of moved over. Did and any we had of trenches those, and stuff? And so, did some of those ideas then get worked into Origins? Because of course, Origins has the trenches and all. That. Yeah. Well, Origins, Origins was different. So we kind of finished Mob. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So so I did Doris, and then the next time I came back was Mob, and then it was the same thing all over again. I was like, oh god, we've made all these amazing <laughs> maps. What am I going to do? Um, so. So we like we got it. We got to do good. So mm -hmm. we did mob. Uh, mob went down well. People enjoyed that. And then and then again, I just moved into another state of fear and went, oh god, I got to do another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every time it's always kind of terrifying. And then we went and did origins. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's like a real kind of fear because I I never want to let down the community and I I, I want to be faithful to gamers. I want to tell stories. I want to do cinematics um, and trying to marry all that together mm -hmm. and not have one dominate the other is is the continual kind of balancing act of, of game development. Well, when you're, when you're making the map sometimes, do you ever run into an issue where sometimes the narrative gets in the way of the gameplay or the gameplay makes yeah. it difficult to tell the narrative? Yeah, it's like um, Origins is a good example, right? We wanted to have the voice of Samantha kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. um, but we were also like worried that when it's coming through, it might be distracting to gameplay. But we mm -hmm. had narrative we wanted to tell. And we, you know, you can use radios, and you can use other things. And we set up like multi-dialogue systems. You saw that like by, by Shadows where Characters coming together triggers different yeah. lines as well. That was um, one of my favorite things I think in Black Ops Three. Oh, cool! Thank you. Um, so, so back in Origins, you know, 
arguably, I would say, I think we overplayed it a little bit, but yeah, those are, there are examples where the narrative kind of just oversteps its bounds. Mm -hmm. uh, because first and foremost, it has to be gameplay, it has to be fun, it has to be enjoyable, the mechanics have to be engaging. They have to be different as well. Like, you know, I've said this on, on multiple interviews, but it's so important to me not to do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. uh, and although we remake things, it's like I don't want to have uh, another map and it's just like, okay, we'll just copy the mechanics from the previous one. Mm -hmm. You know, like if people enjoyed the Rise and Drag, for example, what I was not going to do was say, okay, well, let's just take that formula and repeat it three times. Mm -hmm. So every map is trying to explore different game mechanics, uh, different systems to try and kind of keep people moving. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of principle behind it. So when I first got into zombies, this was around the time of Kindred or Toten, mm -hmm. and I had a few friends tell me like a little bit about the story, and then I started to discover that there were all these links to the story and a lot of like Nazi conspiracy theories, sure. and that seemed to be a lot of the original basis for yep. Deris and Particino and yep. subsequent maps, and that fascinated me. I studied German in um, university actually, mm -hmm. so oh, fantastic. that really caught my interest, and that's what brought me in. Mm -hmm. What were some of like the inspirations that go into Black Ops Three? when you were designing a lot of the narrative. Like, I saw there were a lot of references to, like, Lovecraft lore. Yes. Um, so, so, absolutely, it would be undeniable that the, the Lovecraftian kind of influence on there. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed, though, that kind of disappeared after, um, after uh, Shadows of Evil, it seemed. Um, I don't know if it would disappear, but it was kind of set... It, we, when we were kind of approaching Shadows, um, we really felt like we needed to bring an extra kind of dimension to the storytelling, because mm -hmm. although all the... Um, uh, Nazi kind of conspiracy theory stuff will take you so far, uh, we were looking to kind of flesh it out and, and, and bring in another dimension because otherwise I was getting the feeling that it was going to turn into a one beat mm -hmm. kind of experience. And although there's a lot of people who love that, um, I just wanted to, to have a bit more width on the story so we could go to different places. You know, um, the point when we're starting to experiment with kind of Division 9 and we're going to talk about the dragons mm -hmm. and so forth, I just wanted a little bit of latitude to try different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like if we just kept in, in the Nazi stuff, we were going to run out of runway. Because we'd already done like, what, eight years of, yeah. of storytelling in that. And so it was really like, okay, well, let's open it up. Let's open it up in a certain dimension. And we had lots of different <coughs> kind of creative ideas about different m mythologies and so forth. Um, I'm a huge mythology fan, so... Um, I think I mentioned in the video, I, I kind of collect books on mythology from different countries. So mm -hmm. um, I used to read all that stuff and then think, oh, well, we could, we could go down this avenue or that avenue. You know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. And yeah. I, I, was, I was doing a lot of digging when Setsubo no Shima came out. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't remember the name of it, but there is a story about, I guess, the people who created the island it's supposedly based on. Yeah. I think they had dragons help them build it. Did that, <laughs> do you, are you familiar with this? Did sure. that help you inspire it? Um, it was... It was We'd have, you know, so, so guys in the writing team and then other kind of designers in there would kind mm -hmm. of bring little nuggets in. Yeah. And then we sit in the writing room. So the, 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 uh, the director who kind of works on it um, will then say, okay, well, that's a really kind of cool idea and it's a great kind of map. And then my lead writer will mm -hmm. say, oh, excellent, we got this research. And then it kind of builds from there. And we'll take something as simple as, let's say, a, a rumor about a dragon. And yeah. then we'll take that and then just start fleshing that out. Um, a lot of people underestimate, and I'm... I, I love your kind of content talking about narrative and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But a lot of people underestimate the, the complexity of narrative, the narrative process. Because mm -hmm. they'll hear the lines at the end or they'll see the storyline and go, oh, well, obviously, and I would just change this. Yeah. You're building up a wall. So you have to start off with those kind of base amounts and then layer stuff on. But if you fiddle with something, you have to reconstruct the narrative. So um, the process is actually a very long process. And you just start off with kind of simple pieces. Mm -hmm. And then it gets more and more kind of complex as you build it. Interesting. So a lot of people come to my channel to learn about the zombie storyline, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard to jump into for beginners. Sure. Uh, even when you look at like the timeline, yeah. it jumps off mentioning the Keepers, Monty, sure. and a lot of people who might not know who they are yeah. find it difficult to jump in. Mm -hmm. Where would you recommend they start? Uh, probably on YouTube channels, like yourself. Um, yeah. I think, you know, there's a lot of conversations about, okay, it's, it's a little bit impenetrable at some point, right? Mm -hmm. you know, but saying that, if I, if I dropped you into the middle of you know, Game of Thrones or whatever, you know, yeah. try and make sense of that, it's, it's more the fact that uh, we're trying to make something that's, that's inherently complex, has enough kind of definition and form so that people who want to look at it can, can see that and, and move on that, give space for people to be able to have theories and, and run ideas, um, and then looking to kind of community and that kind of social aspect of, mm -hmm. uh, of viral communication about what's actually happening. Um, so, so it's a very kind of delicate line you're walking on, right? 
from from being too obtuse to mm. to being too precise because you know I'm sure most of you guys are surprised about the timeline coming yeah. out and you, like you said at the beginning right oh that's my that's my <laughs> channel, my, my channel <laughs> gone um, once you start reading and understanding and I'm sure everyone's gonna break it down yeah. and look at it I think there'll be more questions there so mm -hmm. um, but I felt like we got to a point with our storytelling that we can put to bed a whole bunch of things while still opening up mm -hmm. new and things. And move forward. Yeah, exactly. Kind of lay down a foundation. Yeah, exactly. Kind of shift away from the narrative side of things. Sure. I know sometimes you kind of keep a little bit of a distance, <clears throat> excuse me, from yourself like in the community. Mm -hmm. When a new map comes out yes. and you're watching from the sideline, what is that experience like? Um, it's, um, it's I, I sit there with a big smile on my face, I've got to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of watch it and, um, and I'm, you know, the teams here at Treyarch work in incredibly hard to do these things. So I'm really kind of empathizing through them. I'm watching yeah. it going, come on, come on, let it, let, you know. I really want people to enjoy it, you know. Um, this really is, our whole work is about seeing people enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the kind of point of it. Um, yes, we have jobs, you know, but, but the thing that kind of really rewards us is seeing people in the community and seeing gamers having fun with it, because that's, mm -hmm. that's what we do. So I'm sitting there at the side going, come on, are they enjoying it? Are they enjoying it? Are they having fun? Um, and and that's, that's more rewarding than anything else, mm -hmm. I've got I to gotta say. So, um, but I, I also have to kind of temper that as well and make mm -hmm. sure that I'm not just obsessing because mm -hmm. so, I've got to give space. So I have one last question for yeah. you. In my spare time, one of the things I'll do is I'll help the local police department locate missing children. And there's been one missing child that I thought maybe you could help us locate. Okay. So I have a photo of it. Yep. If you have any information, it would be incredibly important if you could bring it forward. Where <laughs> in the world is um, PhD Flopper? <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that question up. Um, thank you for the picture aid as well. <laughs> um, here's the thing, it's, it's, it's a very simple answer. It's a change of mechanic. So, because I, I guess the dolphin dive is gone. It's the dolphin dive, right? It's, it's not because I think people have seen theories saying, oh, Jason hates uh, PhD Flopper. <laughs> It's a mechanical change for me to kind of put that in. And there's, there'd be the, there was ways, mm -hmm. but I didn't think it was authentic to kind of do that yeah. unless you could do it the way it was originally introduced. Like, could I have fudged mm. it in? Sure, but um, I'm, I'm glad that everyone has a special place in their heart for it. And I just, maybe I, it'll one day show up again. I just imagine in your office is a dartboard, and on the dartboard <laughs> is a picture of PhD Flopper. When you're stressed <laughs> out, just a little... Pfft. Well, no, it's quite the opposite. I, in my room is a PhD Flopper that I get my drinks from. So it's, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the juggernaut fridge? Exactly. Yes. That's pretty sweet. I really hope that's real. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll come back to my hope. office in a bit so you can have a look. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you very much. This sure. has been so much fun. No problem. I appreciate it. Thank my pleasure. You. So that was my interview with Jason Blundell, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. And also, please do leave down in the comments below anything you'd like me to ask Jason Blundell in case in the future, maybe, wink, wink, God, I can't wink, I get any more screen time with him. We'll leave it at that. I'm going to go, though. Have a wonderful day, and bye.